Okay, uh, so in this video, I'm going to be prepping and installing this concealed cherry unit. Uh, it's a sort of two piece cherry unit by where uh, the shower spoke, which will come out, which will be put in the highlight video, and then uh, a shower head, a separate shower head. So, first part of the job, measuring, see where I need to pull. So, I've got a few timbers here, and that might pull, might not. I'm going to be taking off at the portion of this plasterboard so I can then see where I need to work and then start essentially first fixing in the shower. So I've already got my pipes coming in to the bottom here. I'll be creating some joins, getting the pipe up to the place I need to, putting this space the right level behind the wall and then creating all my connections for the rest of the pipe work ready. The finished result will basically look, look the same with the sticking out. Um, but there's going to be lots of measuring and getting the right depth to get it right, that's all. So the first thing I'll be doing is kicking off with measuring and then from there I'll start cutting pieces so that I need to cut. So tools for the job, basic set really. So level and I need this at some point. Various, various cutting tools, I'll say a saw, nice way of cutting, hand saw, a bit less dust if I need to get some spaces. Um, pencil, head measure, goes very same. And that is pretty much the most part. So I'll crack on at least taking the water to see where I've got the flow after I've done my initial measure. And then from there I'll take you through the stages of getting the ice fitted. I think ultimately <clears throat> this will need to be created and mounted on something behind this wall. So I'll have to create some timber structure for this and also where the spokes will be fitted. The shower spoke for the, uh, the main shower head and also for the, uh, the separate shower head as well. So I'm going to crack on and I'll show you the next video. Okay, so I've decided we're going to put things in, so the lines will be a bit plain for the video. So, I took the shower front, sort of got a rough idea of the height, just check some guidance on rough heights, and the base is going to be the kids, it's sort of a sort of lower side. Also, I need to decide where I was going to be coming centrally. So, I've got this stud wall timber coming through, and I want to decide if I wanted to remove that and rebuild it and make it dead central or not. And it's, it's a centimetre out, it's a centimetre out. So I think with the tiles that happen as well, I barely notice that. So I decided I'm not going to remove it in the middle. Instead, the shower spout is going to be just off to the right, like literally a centimetre. Uh, and then the, the, the unit itself has got a thermostatic valve at the bottom, and then also the, the shower head, the detachable shower head. So I'm deciding to put these on either side of the timber. So I still need to reinforce, create some structure behind both of these for these to be sitting on. And then likewise for this up here, I'll just have to create a little block put a shower valve adapter on top of that, so I can fix that. So now more measured up, took some photos with measurements. And for measurements, just a uh, silly thing to consider really, is um, the floor itself is already raised, um, so obviously that removes some of my height, in fact, that introduced a bit of a problem. So I would prefer to have a shower uh, head a little bit higher, I'm pretty short family, so we're okay. But instead, I'm having to come a bit down, so we're gonna end up with 194, 195, if we're lucky and I can get it that high, because the shower comes out, it bends down, so there's a consideration there in planning that. Also, as well, when I do my measurements, um, even though I've got the timber floor here, I've still got multiple layers to add on the shower base, the um, tile adhesive. So I counted for another um, 40 mil or so, roughly around there. I can kind of take those into consideration, but a little bit less. So I've added on to all the measurements as well, taking away rather. Uh, so I know where I stand there. So now I've got that all sorted. I was going to take the whole wall off. Part of the plan, um, but then I thought I only need this off to work with, that's fine, that's fine. I'll be getting around doing my taps without taking that wall off, so I decided against it. But we'll do that though, take this whole section on the basis need a bit of freedom to get the pipe working and put things back. I'll try and preserve it, I'll try and take it off neatly because I think it'd be nice just to pop this back on rather than fucking around in the plastic board on and trying to make it the difference. So, um, yeah, I'll do that next, and when it's off, I'll, I'll show you. I can move on to getting the plumbing sorted. If you remember in an earlier video, I've already sorted my plumbing and shutter valves on the other side of the wall. And they're already off as well at the moment, so I should be free to work in this space with the pipe work when we get to that stage where they have to turn the whole wall off the whole house. So when I get to my cutting out, I'll show you when I'm finished. Okay, so I've managed to get um, this full piece of thing, one piece, no cracks on here. I'll just save some time and save wasting materials when I come to. I'll back on that later point. So, um, 
I didn't put this to the board to begin with, so I'm not sure if this was there in preparation for a shower, maybe. And no idea what that is. But nonetheless, I've got all the space I need to work in there. One thing I didn't mention, which is um, some useful tip, and I did forget the video where I got it from. So I'm not really a big fan of measuring. Obviously, that's a bit stupid because I'm not really measuring. Yeah. Um, but instead of re-measuring the heights, what I did, um, which I don't think I've said in the previous video, I already measured the heights where I would things, the barrels, the, the shower, um, as well, things like that. So what I did at the time, to my long measure, I measured from where I wanted it to be, and transposed it onto the opposing wall, so the adjacent wall up, because the idea being there, I then can just do the same backwards onto the timber, and then subsequently when I build my, my supports in here. So I've got my top and bottom markings of the fitting, also got the central line of the other fitting that I need, here I'm less concerned for the shower head because I need it as high as possible and it just about looks like the height to sort of gauge it at. I would like to be a little bit higher but we're talking millimetres so I'll create a list of forms up here. So on that front, similar to how this has been done, um, which I really do not know why this is here by the way. Uh, I'll create a block here that will be the support for my uh, shower rail, my shower um, head, which will spare with what up here. And then I'll be creating additional two supports here. So one support here, which will be the meaty one, which will be for the valve itself. So this pipe that could just coming out there on this side, I'm actually going to need to bring that across and then bring it up. So I'll just put the pipes there and the pipe, then bring it up here. Um, and then on this side will be the adapter. So I'll build these two pieces out, or I'll have to do a lot of measuring, that kind of thing, uh, to make sure I get the right depth. So I'm going to give it a break again to the day. Rather than make a mess up on that one because that will ruin the day if you get the depth in wrong. And then when you come to tile, it's sticking out, which is not quite deep enough or whatever it might be. So I'm going to call it a day there. Then what I'll do when I come back, I'll get my pieces cut ready width wise, and then deciding how deep I lay them, I'll work that out backwards. So I've got the plaster board, which is the same plaster board I put back on. I'll also have a tile backing board on this wall, or the whole of this wall actually. So I'll add that as well. I'll also then have the adhesive, which will be put on the coils and then the coils themselves. I'll work out a whole bit and then I'll be able to set my wooden structure support behind the wall in preparation to then lay them and I'll put them all in at the same time. So I'll do that in the next video. Um, one thing actually to mention, um, I'm going to be going over to building my structure idea with wood. There are other products which I was tempted to buy a handful of them. Um, by way, instead of building a timber structure behind, you buy a pre-made bracket. Uh, that wouldn't have helped me so much here because of where I need things to fall, it wouldn't have helped me as much. Certainly for the, um, the shower, the shower on the top. But for now at least, I'll just go down and take the roots up for an hour and that, and I'll work it backwards from there. So in a break here, next thing I'll pick up, I'll start building out the timber structure, and in this space, this space, and then up here. At the same time, work out what the depth needs to be, and then I'll be beginning to plumb in at the same time. So that next stage or next bit of that phase will be pod work in place, timber in place, and pretty much get into a stage where I can then pressure test it. Uh, while it's all open, of course. So I'll, uh, I'll cover that in the next video. Right, we'll leave it at that. Okay, now comes the fun part. So previously I've got my hole in my wall ready. Uh, what I've done at the moment at least is I've got my timbers that I'll be using as a support for the different pieces of the shower. So I've got the larger, an old floor joist actually, an old new floor joist. <coughs> That's going to be for the main valve itself. Uh, then I've got uh, just a two before over here. That's going to be for the handheld shower outlet. And then up here I've got a block ready, and that'll be for the shower head itself. Now, so this is the actual valve I need to fit uh, to conceal the shower valve unit. So for the shower valve itself, the documentation, what was supplied with the product itself, and what was available online was different in terms of the measurements of depth. So rather than adding any guesswork, uh, I spotted a video on YouTube on which one. So yes, it's just sort of dry fitting it. So essentially I can play around with this, work out what my extra depth will be based upon plaster board, which is skimmed. I mean, just adding a few minerals, so worth bearing in mind. And um, I'll also be adding tar back out, which is six mil. And then there's going to be adhesive and then the tiles themselves. So what I'll be able to do here is actually put it on, work out how much play I have with the plate, because the plate's not adjustable, so I've partly assembled this so I can work out where I stand. And 
then I know how much play I've got. It's looking like at the moment, without me moving around too much, this piece of wood here, the board is going to be quite far back, probably almost touching the plaster board on the other side. But by partly assembling this, I can have a better estimate of where it is. Once I get that in place, roughly where it's going to be, then I'll start adding um, all the brackets in place, the pipe work, etc. So that's for that one. Now for the handheld shower unit, I've got these useful little pieces here. So what these are uh, is to attach your shower rail and handheld unit. So same applies, there's no instructions on the depth of this, so it's I guess some bit of logic maybe, but it gets work. So I'll pre-assemble this to work out how far this will screw on. Then I'll lay it on. And then adjusting it, I'll work out how far I've got to play with. And then that will determine how far I've got the wood in and then how far I've been able to sit on it. Same applies for the um, show unit itself, which is, oh here we are, over here. Exact same as this. I'll lay this on, I'll partly assemble it as well, and then add it in. Uh, what this fitting is here actually worth while mentioning, it's a push fitter setting. So this one's by the John Guest, there's different brands, but I'll work with this one in the end. So ultimately I'll be able to add the plastic push fit, which is straight into this adapter. I have also got another part, bear me one second. Uh, which is an adapter end. What this will be for is attaching to my show unit. So these will have screw for a male into female, and then the push fit will go into here. So basically, I'll be able to put the whole show system together without any compression joints in terms of the ultra compression joints uh, or uh, a need to do any solving or anything like that. So I'm relying on these against plastic. So I'll get this step sorted, I'll also get the depth of the shower head sorted, and then subsequently the shower arm sorted. Once that's in and I've roughly got them in place where I want them to be, I'll start drilling in the rest of the holes to work out how I'm going to get my pipe working. And then the next video what I'll do is start plumbing it in, so to speak, in preparation for the initial leak test. So I'm going to crack on now. So the instructions weren't great in terms of estimating the depth, different measurements both online and, and the, um, the hard copy of the instructions. So I'll work it out myself based upon part of the assembling it and then working out which layers I'll be adding onto it. So I'm going to crack on with that. Once I've got to that stage and it's all dry fit, so to speak, I'll pause, do a short video before then going into the plumbing up and connecting with all the adapters. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm ready to move on to the next stage now. So I've got my timbers in place. Uh, here I fit this, this here and this here. So this is my main valve, the valve, which is a concealed unit. I've got this, which is for my shower head, which is screwed there. And this one here is my shower arm which I took off temporarily because I was drilling some holes. So I woodworked in place, measured all the fittings in place, had a few hiccups with it. So with the shower valve, it's a little, a little bit better because there's a bit more room for error. So I've got around, I think it's around 20 mil or thereabouts in terms of the depth. So I've got a bit of play there, but I think I've measured that correctly, taking into account the plaster ball going back on, the tile back, the DC the tiles. I should be fine. However, when I was doing it for the uh, shower head adapter, that was a little bit more tricky because I measured it to be what I thought was the exact measurement I needed. But due to, I'll show you on this one, due to how much this stuck out, it was a little bit proud of where the plaster board would be. So I had a few options, I could have already cut around the plaster board and had a bigger hole, but it didn't quite make sense. So instead what I've opted for, and a similar scenario down here as well for the shower arm, I opted for making sure I get it as far back as it needs to be, so I can have a flush covering with the plaster board. Um, and then I found this great little product, which I'm probably going to have to buy them, but I'll make that for as and where I get to it. It's a small adapter, which I was googling around and looking at forums and what to do if I was too deep or too far out or whatever else. And then finding this very small adapter, you know, not too dissimilar to something like this, um, ultimately that's going to save the day. And it comes in multiple sizes. The best variation I found was on Amazon. And I'll get the correct name and show you when I do buy the parts. But ultimately, if I'm too deep in, certainly for the arm over here, if I'm too deep, I can extend it by 10, 15, 20, 25 mil. So that's going to be really invaluable. There were some pros and cons on some forums about having another, another connection. But as long as you've got the right um, PTP tag of sorts and you tighten it, you should be fine. I'll be doing those motions as I'm doing my pressure testing at each stage. So if it's going to be a leak, hopefully I'll spot it earlier. So after getting all that in, what I also did then is plan my pipe work. 
So I plan my pipe work, my feed's coming in to feed the valve, the initial valve, my heart on this side and cold on this side, so I'll be coming up. And then feeding the valve to the shower head and then the valve to the arm as well. So I'm planning all that out. For the shower valve itself, uh, I'll be using these attachments, so it's all speed for fittings I'm utilising. So this is a John Guest, and then the other fitting is a HEP2, so HEP2 elbows, make sure I get my pipe work in the right place. And then the John Guest fitting for the size of the valve, and also the shower head. Now, important to mention, which the coming merchants told me, when you're mixing fittings, generally not the best thing to do, but the only reason I did that actually was because the ratings and reviews for the variation of this elbow, um, where your shower head screws into, for the HEP2 variation, the reviews are pretty trash on screw fix leakages and things like that, which generally scares you if you're thinking about when you're installing it. So I opted for the John Guest one, loads of better reviews, but the crux is any people don't know really nice because I didn't. Any John Guest fittings you use or any HEP2 fittings you use, when you correct, uh, create an insert in the pipe, you use the corresponding brand insert. So for the HEP2, it's like a just a metal insert. And then for the John Guest, a plastic with a rubber seal. So I've got a mixture of inserts for the pipe. Pipes are the same, pipe much of muchness. But as I'm wearing fitting the pipes to the corresponding or John Guest fit fitting or HEP2, which is the fitting, I'll make sure I've got the correct corresponding insert in the pipe, just a good point to mention. Also as well, uh, in terms of uh, all of my uh, screw joints, compression joints, um, for those, when I do those, instead of using just PTFE, um, plumber parts and some other plumbers I've seen as well now, and on the forums I'm reading, instead of using PTFE, opt for this Loctite 5 instead. I think the premise is with this, is once you add it on, similar effect as this, but sometimes when you're trying to Get your shower head level for example you can give this a quarter turn back and it shouldn't disrupt it and um, so yeah not the cheapest thing compared to this this is dirt cheap but i've got um, enough here for this this whole job but if needs to be one more so what i'll do now is get all my plumbing in place got my pipe get it all measured up get it dry fit and once that's done i'll turn on the feed which is behind the wall if you recall me fitting the stock valve and then hopefully i get wet so see you in the next clip Right then, I'm not soaking wet, so it's kind of work, for now at least. So I fit the rest of the pipe work, so a few elbows, a few joints, a few joints here to the valve as well. Our pressurised system, no leaks on pressurised it, but I've also tested it, so I fit the, the arm attachment and I fit the, the head attachment as well. Tested that, a few water sort of job, that seems all fine, I don't see any leaks or anything at the moment. I did secure some of the pipe work against some of the timbers that I had as I went through but when I pressurised the system there's still a good bit of movement in a few of the places so before I wrap up on this particular job what I'll do is add in a few more battens, secure the pipe work to those battens and then that'll be me comfortable enough to close the door on this. I am going to be leaving this exposed whilst I move around the rest of the bathroom, probably one of the last things I've sort of sealed up just because of the hesitance around it um, and then I'll um, move around the rest of the bathroom and then come back See this up as a last, last attempt. But for now, I'm pretty happy. I'll come back tomorrow, a bit late again there, get the woodwork, secure it, and then I'll do a summary wrap up of this particular job in terms of the shower. The next job I'll be doing after that will be the basin area, a mixture of some plumbing work and then a small amount of electrical work. I'll cover that off in another video. But for now, yeah, happy it's all in. It's relatively neat and it seems functional. So, call it a win there and good night. Okay, now this is me wrapping up on this particular job. Um, so, summary, uh, I knew I was going to place the shower here, it was a concealed unit, uh, a lot of advice against it but I thought it was going to go, decided to go for the plastic push fit and the various fittings to accommodate it, I figured it would be a lot easier than trying to solder it on the wall or any of that jazz. So, got my space in the wall, did my measurements, had a few issues with the height because I've already raised the floor, which is sort of semi-resolved. And then I was trying to get a central point and I couldn't really, so I've just gone slightly off, but I think once it's all in, it will look fine. Um, got my concealed unit in. That one had conflicting instructions, uh, so both on the online instructions and the paper instructions that came with it, it was a bit conflicting with the depth. So I sort of went for middle ground. The shower valve I'm less bothered about because you've got some play, uh, up to around 20mm play in terms of the depth. So I have my, measured it as accurately as I could, but you, know, you never know when you start layering on the layers. So I'm quite happy with the concealed unit and that's all attached fine. The, the shower arm, so one of the little spray arms, 
That one's a little bit more ambiguous. I needed enough depth so I could sit it behind where the finishing plasterboard would be. And also enough so I could attach the attachment which I've attached for now because I need to test it. So that and the shower, because the shower had a bit more of a problem. Um, I tried making that come out a little bit more, but it was sitting proud of the actual frame so the plasterboard wouldn't have been able to sit or already about to have a big hole around it. So I thought rather than do that, I'll sit it as, as deep as it needs to be. And then I found on Amazon, which I will be getting these parts at some point, so I will show, I don't need it right now. Um, a small adapter um, and varying from 10 mil every five mil then to I think 35 or something like that. Realistically looking at that, I would guess that I'd probably need a 10 or 15 mil um, coupler adapter. So I'll get that for here. And then for the, the, the shower arm, I might be okay without any, so we'll see there. So uh, plastic push fit fitting, I went for the, the Loctite 55 on all of the, the sort of screw, screw or compression joints. And then for the push fit, I went for HEP2. No choice really, I just ended up with some HEP2 stuff instead of um, uh, John Guest Speed Fit. One point to mention, I did mention it previously, when you're using the HEP2 fittings, use the HEP2 inserts, in the pipes and then likewise when I'm using the John Guest fittings which would be these and these here use the John Guest inserts they're slightly different and um, so they're already in as well the last thing I just touched on um, before this, this short clip here is a bit of reinforcement not to hold the weight of it it's just more to stop movement so we had a lot of play down here a lot of play when the pressure kicked in and down here and a little bit here and there was a little bit here so what I've gone ahead and done is just added a few pieces of wood in the various places where I need to pick up on that flex and then I've just put a small clip in. These aren't weight bearing, they're just held in with plastic ball screws to go in. So sturdy enough that it should stop some of the flex. I mean it's plastic pipe so it is going to flex but it was moving a bit too much in my life considering it would then be behind the wall. I uh, have done a pressure test so we are pressurised right now and then I did also add my attachments, I'll come to that in a second actually, um, to test the flow of water so I know I can get hot water. I didn't test the cold but I'm not going to seal this up straight away so if I need to remediate I can. Um, what I did check is both the arm actually and the, and the shower. So the, the slight issue I had here, I could probably be outshot there actually. Because the shower arm and the, ray, the, the floor was already raised, I needed to be as high as possible. So I went as high as I possibly could against the timber here, but didn't really take into account that the spout itself was, was at an angle. Now that wouldn't normally be a problem um, because you would have enough space to spin it. Because I was so high, I actually didn't have enough space to spin it. So I had to bring it down just ever so slightly. So there's a bit of play here, which I'm not putting any pressure on the pipe work, so that's fine. Bring it down just slightly, and I have actually scratched the ceiling as I've turned it in, but I'm okay with that because I'll just paint it or patch it up when I need it. So you say he's putting a hole in the ceiling or just in the pipe work dramatically. So for now, I'm all finished at this stage. The next thing I'll be doing, I am gonna leave this open as I said. The next thing I'll be doing is working in this space, and over here, all I'm really gonna be doing is um, getting the, the basin unit ready. So the basin unit is going to be in this general space. So the glass will be here. Uh, the basin unit will be here. In that space, I'm going to just add on some attachments to the pipework. But I'm not going to plumb the taps because I'm not going to put the unit fully in. The main thing I'm going to be doing in this space is reinforcing the wall just so I can hang this, this basin unit, chunky unit, uh, with a marble top and a sink on top of it. So I'm going to just add in some extra supports behind the wall and then I can lay it on top of there if I need to. The other thing I'll be doing, probably not immediately, but maybe in a later one, is just some minor electrics. So this is a feed, a few spur outside. I'll be bringing uh, a junction box off here and bringing it down to somewhere about this height, and that'll be, or could be over there actually, and that'll be for a, um, a shaving socket, because the original plan was to have a shaving socket within a mirror, and we got the mirror unit we got on, on the wall and it just looked too big, not that good either to be honest. Um, unbox, so if you need to show a unit, you know, drop me a line. Um, so we'll be taking that off instead, going for a smaller one. So we'll need a feed to light up the LED mirror and then a separate one for the shows, for the shaving socket. So we'll be going down that route. So I'm going to wrap up here. So it wasn't too complicated, a bit long winded in some of my parts. Nice how there wasn't any leaks immediately, so I was happy days there. And overall, I think it all looked quite smart once it's in. So closing the door on this, I'll move on to this in the next video. So. I'll catch you then. Have a good day.